I guess we can. All right, inshallah, let's get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru. Wa na'udhu billah min shuri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihi allahu falamudillala. Wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wa wahdahu la sharika la. Anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhalazina amanutuku allaha. Hakka tukatihi wa la tumutunna. Illa wa antum muslimoon. Ya ayyuhal nas. Attaku rabbukum al-azhi bin khalqin bin wahidah. Wa khalqa minha zawjaha. وَبَسَّمْ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٌ كَثِيرٌ وَنِسَاءٌ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تُسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَكُلُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ مَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ My dear brothers and sisters all thanks and praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek his help and forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds and whosoever Allah guides can never be led astray and whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance and I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners and I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and his messenger. Uh, alhamdulillah my dear brothers and sisters I'm so glad and feeling very privileged to be here today with you to continue to share with you some of the reflections that I, I have about the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, today I'd like to you know, continue this forward and talk about two of the names, Al-Majid and Al-Wahid. Al-Majid means the magnificent. And the meaning of Al-Majid is similar to another name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we talked about some time ago, uh, which is Al-Majid. Um, they're similar and not the same. And Al-Majid means glorious. And if we look at this word from the lens of the English language, Al-Majid is an intensification of attributes that describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the intensification of the attributes is a way for us to say that uh, any quality we can imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might have is the best example of that quality. It is a perfection of any quality you can imagine. And Allah is not just majestic. You know, Allah is the most majestic as an example. And similarly, Allah is not just merciful. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful or al-Karim. Um, you know, Allah also describes that same word for the Quran. Allah describes the Quran as glorious. And we know this from Surah Al-Buruj, verse 21. Bal huwa Quranu majid. This is a glorious Quran. So we can understand this to mean that the Quran is not just a book with words. It is the best of books with words. It is not just a vessel carrying the words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the best vessel to transmit the words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, the attribute al-majid, which means the magnificent, is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is perfection, perfected. And there's a beautiful hadith narrated by Anas bin Malik and recorded in the Tirmidhi when Umm Salim came upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Teach me some words that I can say in my salah. So Umm Salim came to the Prophet asking, teach me some words that I can say in my salah. So he said, he Salaam, said, mention Allah's greatness by saying Allahu Akbar 10 times. Mention Allah's glory 10 times by saying Subhanallah. And mention Allah's praise by saying 10 times Alhamdulillah. And then ask as you like. So what Allah is teaching uh, what, what Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us about that is that Allah is very accessible to everyone. You know, even during your salah, when we glorify Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we are bringing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala into our lives. So remembering that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is not a material object in this world. There is no amount of rational proof in the scientific sense that will prove the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this material world. We can see the proof of Allah's existence in all of his creations, ourselves included. And Allah exists because we believe that Allah or God exists. We behold Allah in our spiritual eyes. We believe in the existence of Allah in our spiritual hearts. And if we do not believe in the existence of Allah, then we have closed ourselves to our creator. And we have then disallowed ourselves access to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what we do, we can never diminish the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, as we are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are made of body and spirit. 
The physical body belongs in this material world, while the spirit is a substance from the um, celestial realm. And we talked about this briefly um, with the example from what Ibn Atayla wrote in his book, uh, uh, Kitab al -Ahkam. So our body and our spirit have a relationship with one another. You know, one is a vessel for the other, but both require sustenance to thrive. The body needs sustenance to keep going in this world and sustains itself by, by consuming from this material world. The spirit, on the other hand, cannot be satiated by the material consumptions, you know, the food, the vegetables, and so on. None of that is going to satiate the spirit. So in order to sustain the spirit, the nourishment for the spirit is the remembrance of Allah, or the remembering that God is the creator of everything in this universe and ourselves included, and then also being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the way we behave ourselves in this world and we treat one another is how we then sustain our spirit, our um, soul in this world. So if our focus is to nourish our physical self only, our spiritual self will be rendered impotent. It will be deprived of any nourishment that it could you know, receive. And conversely, if we only feed our spiritual self, our body will decay. Uh, you know, we, we, we talk about um, eating you know, three times a day at least, having the right kind of calories, um, you know, calories that are bad versus calories that are good and so on. We talk about all this in very great detail about our physical self. And we leave out in those conversations about our spiritual self. So just like you eat three meals in a day, I would argue that five times a day we feed our, our spirit with uh, nourishment when we go and pray our salah. So Fajr, Bahar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Those are the times when we're nourishing our soul with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by proclaiming his greatness, by reminding ourselves and one another that you know, this is an act of worship. We are being obedient to our creator and eliminating just those five daily prayers, for example, will deprive our soul for the opportunity to receive that nourishment. Uh, so this brings me to the second attribute that I wanted to talk about today, which is al-wahid, meaning the unique, the one. Allah is the one and only, al-wahid. And unique or al-ahad is also relating to the same word. So this is to say that Allah can neither be divided nor duplicated. And this is the foundation of our theology. You know, our faith, our, um, uh, our Islam is based on the idea that there's only one God and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and only creator of the universe and everything that is within it. And Allah sustains all his creations. You know, he's the master of the day of judgment. We see that in uh, Surah Fatiha every time we pray Salah at least 17 times a day, Maliki Yawm al with the revelation of the Quran, Allah is telling us that there is only one God as well. So let's establishing that firmly. So in Surah Maida, for example, in verse 73, we are told, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَ وَمَا مِنَا وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ Those who say that Allah is one in a trinity, ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَ have certainly fallen into disbelief. And then Allah reaffirms that by saying, Illa ilahun wahid, there is only one God. So wahid is also the Arabic number for one. However, when we say that Allah is al-wahid, the scholars agree that this is referring to Allah as a, a singular entity, meaning without any equal. There is nobody else or nothing else like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be divided because there is only one. So Allah is not a sum of parts, and therefore Allah exists alone. And how do we know that Allah is indivisible? How do we know that there's only one Allah? That is reaffirmed again, if you look at Surah Al-Khalas, uh, which is chapter 112 in the Quran, we're told in the very first verse of Surah Al-Khalas, and I'm sure everybody knows uh, this particular surah, which is, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, where Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu He is Allah, one and indivisible. And in verse number three, in the same chapter, we are told, Lam yalid, walam yulad. He has never had offspring, nor was he born. So there is nothing that came before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah was there uh, forever, in eternity. And according to the scholars, there are three themes that we will consistently find in the Quran. And what are those three themes? We'll learn about stories. There are stories of the prophets and so on. The second thing we learn is the teachings 
for Muslims. How do we behave? What is halal? What is haram? And then the third thing we learn in the Quran is the belief in the unseen. So this reoccurring theme about emphasizing that right now we might not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment when we will all be called to account, we will witness the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. So the third theme in the Quran is captured in that first verse of Surah Ikhlas. He is Allah, one and indivisible. There's also a uh, hadith recorded in a Tirmidhi um, as narrated by Abu Huraira. So the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, he was calling all of his companions and he said, you know, gather and I shall recite to you one third of the Quran. So this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calling all his companions together, gather and I shall recite to you one third of the Quran. So whoever was gathered there when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this call, they came out and they waited for him and he came out and said, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. And then he went back. The companions looked at each other and they says, the messenger of Allah, you said that you shall recite one third of the Quran. And we thought this was news from the heavens. And Salaam, Rasul Salaam came out and said, indeed, I said that I would recite to you one third of the Quran. And Qul huwa Allahu ahad is indeed equal to one third of the Quran. So the weight of this one verse alone captures one of the three themes in its entirety for us in the Quran, which is that believing in the unseen, you know, believing that there is a heaven, believing that there is a hellfire, believing that there is one God, believing in the angels, um, all of these things, believing in the messages and the prophets that came before Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of these are, are unseen to us today and having that belief, that conviction in its existence and reality is what Allah is, is telling us as well as what the Prophet Sallallahu is reaffirming and emphasizing. So we learn from this hadith that reciting the first verse of Surah Akhlas is the equivalent of reciting one third of the Quran. Just the first verse alone. And if we look at when this chapter was revealed, we understand that this verse in this chapter, Surah Akhlas, is inviting us. So let's, let's understand the history when this was revealed. So when the Prophet ﷺ was inviting the Quraysh to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they asked him to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Quraysh were idol worshippers at the time. So the people who were living in Mecca were idol worshippers uh, and they had associated attributes with their idols. Some idols were good for wealth, some idols were good for knowledge and so on and so forth. So when Rasulullah was inviting them to believe in one God, they wanted to know what made this God different and special. And in that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Akhlas. So this chapter was revealed to let us know that there's only one creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first word Surah Akhlas is also part of um, one of the rituals that the Prophet Sallallahu used to do before he went to bed. And this is also captured in, in a hadith that's considered authentic. Um, and it was narrated by Aisha ta'ala on how where she described that whenever um, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, went towards his mattress each night, he would join his palms together, his hands together, and then he would breathe into them and then recite in his palms, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. And then he would recite, Qul a'uzu bi rabbil falak. And then he would recite, Qul a'uzu bi rabbil nas. Just one verse from each one of those chapters, or the first verse from each one of those chapters. And then he would pass uh, his hands over his, his head, his face, his body, and he would, he would do this three times. And that was part of his, his Salaam ritual before he went to bed. So my dear brother and sister, I would like to remind myself and then all of you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all knowledge. Alhamdulillah, I am sitting here receiving this knowledge and sharing this with you. And alhamdulillah, you will hopefully take this knowledge and make better use or good use of it. And the knowledge about actions that are good for us and actions that are bad for us, those too come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, you know, we are told as Muslims to separate the actions of one individual from the individual themselves, because the actions are what Allah will judge. And we as individuals can return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to repent. We don't know when people's heart will turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is, there is a, a 
there's that line, that distinction drawn between the actions and the person. And when we are alive, we should strive to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feed our, our spirit, feed our soul, nourish it with the remembrance of Allah, nourish it with the, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And over time, you know, it's easy for us to fall into gradual delusion about ourselves. You know, we, we might think we have more knowledge. We might look at others as inferiors because of that. Um, we might act passive aggressively in certain situations. That same can happen to us even when we have, you know, an increase in wealth, for example. You know, we might begin to think of ourselves with, with more esteem, with, with more special treatments that must come our way. And worse yet, we might even fall into the traps of having conversations that will take away our good deeds. We might fall into backbiting uh, or talking ill about other people. Uh, and whenever we find ourselves in that state, you know, we should remind ourselves to ask Allah SWT for forgiveness. Remember that Allah does not punish us immediately. And that's an important point to remember here because when we transgress or rebel against the guidance from Allah SWT, Allah isn't going to punish us right that second. You know, it's only a matter of time when Allah will call our actions to account. So what we learn from reading the Quran is that there were many examples of communities that were destroyed by Allah after a period of disobedience. Two examples come to, to mind um, for me, which is, you know, the story of Nu or Noah, alayhi salam, you know, when, when he was told, commanded to build the ark um, because his people were uh, going to be punished for the consistent disobedience. And similarly, also with uh, the story of Lot or Lut, alayhi salam, where his community was, was in consistent disobedience, engaged in the act of, of, uh, of homosexuality. So, you know, Allah tells us that there comes a point in time when, you know, Allah will, will, will punish the people for their continued disobedience. And it all starts with us. You know, we, we need to be accountable to ourselves and we need to tell ourselves, are we or are we not going to be obedient? And how much obedience do we want to practice in our day-to-day -day living? So my dear brothers and sisters, um, you know, as Muslims, we should reject actions and things that will earn us the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Arabic word uh, haram is what we refer to um, things or actions that are that are forbidden that Allah has warned us about. And Allah is perfection. You know, our existence and the qualities we possess are a mere reflection of the attributes uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has possessed. And so, so the example or the analogy I'd like to use is that we're like a shadow cast on a wall. The outline that, that is formed by the shadow is a mere suggestion of the greatness that lives in the source of light. So for us in this world, the Quran is the source of light given to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a thing in our material world that gives us this guiding light. And it is a guiding light that tells us about our creator and helps us see that which we cannot see. And like any source of illumination, it needs to be held tightly. It needs to be directed towards darkness. So imagine yourself holding that flashlight. You need to point it in a specific direction. You need to hold on to that flashlight in order to see what is in front of you. And when we choose to live outside the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are in a way choosing to live in darkness, absolutely oblivious to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we may begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we not only nourish ourselves in this material world, but inshallah, our spirits will also feel nourished in this world and successful in the hereafter, inshallah. I mean, Allah, Allah. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and give us the wisdom that is, give us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it most. <laughs>
Rabbana innaka antal azizul hakim. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfirlana wa tarhamna. Dona kunna min al-khasirin. Rabbana amanna faqfirlana. Warhamna wa anta khayrul rahimin. Inna allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha'an al-fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'izzukum la'allakum tazakkarun. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalameen. My dear brothers and sisters, Ameen, Allahumma Ameen. May Allah guide us, may Allah bless us on this uh, Jum'ah. Ameen.